Hello everyone, welcome to the session of regression analysis. In the previous class, we have introduced the basic understanding of simple linear regression and the least square method, how to estimate the parameters and also the car fitting using train line and Excel illustration also. Today, we will extend this simple linear regression concept or linear regression into the basic features of goodness of fit. That means, what are the measures available to test a regression is good or not good. So, in order to do that, today we will focus the major aspects of measures of goodness of fit like R square and then standard error, then F statistic and prediction interval. If you look at this particular slide, in the left hand side, I have mentioned the summary of yes or the introductory session of regression analysis. Today, we will also illustrate the detail of this output, how to read the output analysis at the end of the session. This is the overall you know, regression line. You can see the y hat, the forecasted value, predicted value and the measure of coefficient of the regression coefficients the, through this formula, you can calculate it. I will show you again today. So, this is the summary of this last session. Now, let us extend this points that you know what are the measures of goodness of fit. Fitting that you are doing whether that is a good fit or not that we are going to test through some measure like you know in time series data we have used uh, mean square error or say you know RMSC percentage absolute division. So, we have discussed that through them we measure whether our you know if you have a minimum RMSC say we say that your forecast through a particular time series model is good. Similarly here if you have a good R square higher R square you will say that the model is good or the fitness the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable are explained very well. So, therefore, these concepts we will study today and then at the end you will get to know that how once you fit a regression for a data sets and you will be able to understand how the model is really performing or explaining the dependent variable through independent variable effectively or not that we will get to know. First, the coefficient of determination it is R square it says that you know how well the regression is fit or you can say that why the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. It is the ratio between the sum of square error by total sum of square error to the mean. How to calculate this R square value I will show later. This one coefficient of determination for example, if you have a data set say x and y and say you have fit the line this y equals to say a plus p x or alpha plus beta x. So, there you will have to calculate the r square value like explain variation by total variation. How, how to do that I will discuss later. So, once you get r square value the higher the r square value closer to 1 better the model is. Then next point is that this measures the goodness of fit that your regression model is really fitted well. So, all points are falling on the line that ensures or may closure to the line that ensures. Then standard error of regression is the second measure of goodness of fit or one more you know way of measuring the fitment of your regression model that is called standard error. What does it says? It says that the deviations the variation from your predicted value or predicted line look at the line here from your predicted line how that deviations are been spreaded if it is less the model is good. For example, suppose if you predict here at that particular point say, so in that case how the deviations are been deviated or from your mean predicted value. Suppose this is the predicted value and what are the deviation over there. So, that calculations are like the way we calculate the standard deviation. So, similarly here we calculate the standard error. That will also tell you that whether your model is having a good prediction or for future if you predict something for a new data set independent variable input you will get to know how accurately or how the model is reliable with the spreadness of the error that is called the standard error the interval will calculate. Then F statistic it is also you know one of the parameter or one of the test which helps you in establishing your uh, regression model. It is used through ANOVA analysis in this case 
that means once you do the analysis of your the overall regression test or overall regression figment of your data between dependent variable and independent variable there you find that you know if your f value is high and the corresponding significant value the p value i'll show you if it is less than 0 0.05 you can say that the data are been well fit so overall like at least one variable will explain or independent will explain the dependent variable so this gives the overall you know significant test of your entire regression model not the individual variable level to the independent variable when you go to the multiple regression you will get the better f essence of f statistics in the analysis of regression test it is also one of the major if in case look at here the with no it is compare the fit of the regression model to the model with no independent variable null model that means if there is no relationship between say suppose y equals to alpha plus beta x if there is no relationship between the data so beta will become 0 between x and y so in that case what happens in your null hypothesis will get rejected and in that case what happens it become a to some extent like regression free model or you can say simple intercept model so there is no relationship between the independent and dependent so therefore f statistics has a good significance or the good merit in understanding the goodness of fit of your overall regression models so we'll discuss these aspects also using the result analysis through excel and then another is the predict prediction interval as i discussed like it comes from the standard error so once you calculate the standard deviation so one standard deviation two standard deviation similarly also you can use the prediction interval through the calculation of standard error and you can see how the predicted value at the end is been deviated from your upper limit and lower limit so if the deviation interval or predicted interval is say you know comes in a very closer range that means your model is having good prediction so how to do that and how to calculate it and how it also it becomes a part of goodness of fit that also we will study today and then one more aspect like all Pearson correlation coefficient R simple R correlation coefficient that also helps in making in measuring the goodness of fit between the independent variable and dependent variable in general it has been used for in two type of data analysis and the relationship calculating the relationship between the two data sets say whether they are really they have correlation or not but in regressions we do use that between the independent variable and dependent variable to calculate the coefficient of determination it actually if you calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient and if you take a square of it just take a square of it it will actually in turn convert into a coefficient of determination in regression analysis so therefore that square that I told that you can calculate through correlation coefficient also by taking a square of it so these are the four five you know measure of goodness of fit approach of checking whether your model regression model is good or bad here I can summarize like you know coefficient of determination r square then standard error of regression and then f statistic through overall ANOVA test of your entire regression model and then prediction interval and the correlation square of correlation coefficients look at that these measures collectively provide a comprehensive assessment of how well the linear regression model fits the data so remember these five points at least one or two you should test after setting up your regression model whether they are really having a good value or the merit or not if you found that this couple of you know goodness of fits approach are good or giving a good outcome or good you know value to the model merit to the model then you can say that yeah you have set a good model or fit a good regression model now let's see this and discuss one by one of all of them with through numerical illustration right so first we'll discuss the standard error then we'll go to r square and predicted interval in the r square and one by one so let us take one example through that we'll illustrate the standard error first so here we have taken like the first example that i have discussed similar like sales and say advertisement and sales we have taken two variables this is your independent variable x advertisement the amount of advertisement you put the tentative sales will increase right so here suppose we have how many six data sets suppose we have so these are your amount of investment in advertisement and that these are sales say in uh, million say and then if you like the previous session we have discussed in the previous class about the fitment of regression analysis and the uh, least square and the corresponding coefficients of regression uh, line so we have calculated this numerical data and then we have calculated the b coefficient and a coefficient that means your alpha plus beta or say you can alpha plus beta x or you can say a plus b x so that we have calculated through these two formula and we found it and these are the mean of the data using them now we will look at the data so we will fit some regression right so here is the regression line and here is the b value here is the a value 
and here is the estimation. For suppose if the spending of the advertising for the next year, you have fit the line, look at this, this is the line you have set and then you are putting the advertisement value, suppose for the next year, your advertisement you are putting 6 lakhs here, next year for 7th year, you are putting advertisement as a x input as 6 lakhs and then in that case, what would be your tentative or predicted cell? So that you are predicting through a regression line. So what could be the cell? You can see that cell hat or predicted value here for 6 as input of x, you are getting actually this on the line as the predicted value of cells. What is the predicted value of cell? Here it is 3.25. Okay. So now what we got from here? This is nothing but actually the summary of the previous session. And you got the cell as like you know, if you put the data 6 here, you got the cells as 3.25. Now let us go to the standard error calculations. The standard error, remember the first one of the goodness of fit approach we are illustrating it. So standard error is nothing but look at the prediction where predicted value is here suppose for a given value of this or whatever and the variation from your predicted value, from your mean prediction you can say, from the average prediction or the mean predicted value or how much deviations are there of your data in the future that you know that interval we are trying to get or that error you are trying to get. Low, lower the error, better the model, right? If you have a too much of variation, say, in your prediction, then you have not fit a good model. If you have a less variation, that means you have a good fit a good model. So that how to calculate the standard or like the standard deviation, the measure of dispersion we calculate from there. Here also we calculate the dispersion, the deviation from your mean prediction, right? That we are trying to calculate through standard error. Actually, it is nothing but summation of error square, you can say, by n minus 2. So here the error you will get for data sets and if you calculate that with this is the like you know n is the your total sample and through that you can calculate n minus 2 is nothing but you know for multiple regression we call it as n minus k minus 1 and if the k is degree of freedom say here you have one independent variable because simple linear regression x and y. So k is coming to be 1 so n minus 2 is coming here but in multiple regressions n might be 8 might be say, say 20 sample size or 30 sample size and k could be say 3, run, 3 independent variable and accordingly you can calculate that. We will discuss that in multiple regression but here we are assuming that only you know simple linear regression and here is your standard error right like your square root you are taking because you are calculating like the standard deviation from the variance you calculate standard deviation here also you are calculating the square root of the, this value nothing but your standard error right. So this way you estimate it and then if you put the data of all these through calculation of the previous table that I have shown you and you will get the standard error as this 0 0.306 which is nothing but in terms of this data set it is nothing but almost 3 lakhs. So this is your standard deviation that means if your prediction here how much in the previous data set if you see it is the prediction was for 6 lakhs of investment in advertisement your sales are coming out to be as a predicted as 3.26 million. So therefore in that case if you come here it is 3.25 but it can have a deviation of 3 lakhs to upside or downside. So this is what your standard error. So it is nothing but plus minus actually 306000 or you can see that point 306 in terms of this value whatever the scale you put. So this deviation it can be plus side it can be minus side this way you can measure the standard error. I will show you in excel more detail of it. So this gives you the lower the standard error value, lower the standard error value, better the model actually. So that means deviations are not your sample is been spread in a like you know homogeneity aspects I have talked about like you know, homostatisticity aspects I have discussed in the as a definition in the previous class. So that aspects we are actually capturing effectively. So therefore you know data are falling inside and therefore you have put a inside your relationship one range and you can see that you know data has a good less amount of variation and whatever the variation are there among the data you are actually capturing through standard error. Now let us go and see the interval now through standard error and the corresponding interval which is also part of with the uh, standard error. So now let us see the prediction interval. More detail of standard error I will show you how the RBN are calculated using illustration this through this example as well as the excel also. Here the upper limit of standard error look at the graph here. So upper limit, upper limit of standard error or lower limit with the data set, right. So you got the sales prediction like standard error value here, hold it. And now if you come back to the data sets and the, let us understand the formula first. So it is nothing but the predicted value, the line on the line, the predicted value 
for a given input cell of x say the predicted value plus standard error so it is two standard error three standard error like you know say one like one sigma two sigma this way in standard deviation we can use the confidence interval here also we use the one standard error two standard error look at t is the number of standard error of prediction interval right that means that like you know you might have a prediction interval like this right or let me put like this you might have a prediction interval like this so what are the interval that you are predicting you are you are confident so that are been calculated through this upper limit and lower limit assuming that the that the data observed points are normally distributed around the regression line right around the regression line in that case like standard deviation calculations you can also use the similar concept here of standard error and the confidence prediction interval rather than confidence interval you call it we call it a prediction interval for you know one sigma plus minus one sigma of or one standard error you will get say around 68 percent confidence or prediction interval if you make it if you put your desired as a 95 percent in that case you have to take plus minus two standard error the standard error we have calculated with the mean value you will get to know the range that you know once you make a predictions that you will get to know that the variation of the data deviation of the data will fall in between that range and you are confident of 95 percent if you take 99 percent in that case your deviations will be plus minus three sigma of that so let us see this in your illustration of that particular example so here we found the you know if your input is coming out to be say six lakhs as advertisement your sales will be almost 32 lakhs right 32.5 lakhs say. so this is your sales now this is the predicted value now so this is your predicted value 32 point we have 3.25 we talked about right or say 32 lakhs so 32 lakhs 32.5 lakhs say. so this is your prediction now but you have to calculate the confidence interval or say prediction interval now through the standard error so what standard error we found we found the standard error with this one right we found the standard error and this is your predicted y hat this is your nothing but y hat y hat y hat plus so suppose if you want to set 95 percent confidence interval or predicted interval in your forecast data in your forecast data in that case your upper limit will be predict predicted value plus 2 of standard error which is coming out to be 38.6 lakhs and if you and if you subtract it you will get the lower limit of your range with 95 percent confidence or say predicted interval in that case it would be you know 26.38 lakhs so this is what the interval prediction so you are confident the 95 percent you are confident that your predicted value because it's all about prediction right your predicted value will not go beyond 38 lakhs a and it will not go down below 26 lakhs a so that means only five percent chance that only five percent chance that it may go outside of that rest 95 percent data your predicted value will fall in this range this gives you the confidence of your forecast or the regression line and the range are like that now remember one more part here i have used this particular formula this particular formula look at this the upper limit will be like y plus minus one sigma two sigma two one standard error two standard error here we have put two e but this is valid the number of standard of error of predicted interval valid if you have a good amount of good sample data good amount of sample let's say 25 30 sample if you have a minimum in your data sets in your data sets say x and y say if you have a good amount of data sets sample size say 25 30 or more than that in that case you know you can take this t value with one sigma one standard error two standard error three standard error and you can get your confidence interval of 68 percent 95 percent and 99 percent and you can wind up your prediction that okay i have a good predictions with this is my confidence interval whatever this you can do it but if you have a less sample of data but for this examples how much sample data we had let us go back to the data you can see only we have six sample size right only six sample size we have so in that case generally people if you have a less sample in your regression data people do not take this t as one sigma one standard error two standard error like this people try to relate that through the normal distribution data and from there they calculate the value of t here also i have listed that for you suppose this is your forecast say and then you have to like in, in that case forecast plus plus minus t standard error say so this prediction this t will not take directly from the to one standard or two standard error if the sample size is less in that case this t will be selected through the no, standard normal table for example here you have a six sample size sample size is sample size was six right in that case you go back to the data table and then from that put the six and you will get like you know, if the sample size is less than that in that case the t stands for the number of standard deviation from the mean of the distribution 
to provide a given probability of exceeding the limit through chance. So, that means you go to the standard normal table and from there you calculate your corresponding t value. In that case, if sample size is 6, which is very less than 10, 25 or 30, in that case we will not select the 2 for 95 percent confidence interval, we will select 2.78. From the data from the table, you will be able to select it. If the sample size say from the 6, if reduced to 4, say, it might go up say 2 point say something say 9 to 9 to something it will come like this. So, if you increase the sample size your this value will come down this t value will reduce. This is what you know the prediction interval through standard error. So, 95 percent confidence interval is now like this look at here here if you see since the data are less. So, you are not directly taking the t value t value as 1 or 2 etcetera for 95 percent you are not taking 2 you are taking directly to like as from the table 2.75. If the sample size increases, this value will reduce and it will come closer to the two standard deviations. Now, if you consider say you know you want to consider the say only 68 percent only one standard deviation, one standard error. So, in that case t will be 1 if you have a large sample size, but if you have a less sample size in that case what you will be you will put you cannot put like 1 plus or minus 1 standard error. In that case since less sample size and you want to get a 68 percent say you know confidence interval in your data sets you want to check the, part, the prediction interval in that case you might get here the t value will be around say say 1.35 something you will get. So, you will multiply that with the mean value and that prediction you will get the prediction of 68 percent confidence you will get from here right. And now if you go back to the previous this data set here and if you want to take 65 per 68 percent confidence like one standard error then you directly and if you have good sample size then in that case you put t equals to 1 put t equals to 1 and you will get the corresponding value here, you will get a 2 interval of that. So, 1 standard error, 2 standard error for small sample size you direct go directly go to the table and put instead of t you put the t value from your table. But if you have a large sample size you take directly from that standard error and multiply it one time, two time based on the 68 percent, 95 percent and say 99 percent. If it is 99 percent then you put 3 standard error. This way the model will give you your prediction interval of your forecast.